Stellar based white balance, background neutralization, removing green, pedestal removal, just lots. Welcome to SETI Astro. All right, continuing on with functions. Up next will be star removal. So that's gonna be the star with the minus button. Currently it sports utilizing Starnet or my Cosmic Clarity Dark Star, which is still in development, but you, you can utilize it. So make sure you have a Starnet and Cosmic Clarity set up properly uh, per, I, I believe, part two of this series. I'm just gonna use Starnet. It's gonna ask you if the current image is linear. It needs to know that because Starnet only works on nonlinear images. So if it is linear, I need to stretch it in the background, run Starnet, and then revert it back to its uh, normal linear state. So in my case, it's uh, not linear, so I'm just gonna say no. It's gonna load up a little progress window. And then when it's done, it's gonna say the starless image updated successfully. You get a preview for the stars only image as well. Uh, and you're going to notice that the stars only image was pushed to the next available slot. So now we have our starless image here. And then in the, the next slot is the stars only image. Now, if these were linear, now you would go through and do your nonlinear stretches and everything, and then probably use star stretch on the stars to, to get the, your stars to the brightness you want. And then the next step would be recombining it at the end, right? So if you hit the stars plus button, it allows you to load the starless image from a slot or a file, and then the stars only image from a slot or a file. So I'm gonna do slot zero for my starless image, and well, stars only from my stars only image. And now that's going to screen the two together. The other blood type is addition. Normally you don't do that on nonlinear images. That would be a, a special linear, time you would do that so for the most part you're just going to leave it on on screen the other really nice feature here though is you could adjust the slider and that's going to dim the stars uh it, it it adjusts the screening blend mode so you don't need the full blast of the stars in screen mode you can you can tone them down just a little bit if if you thought they came through a little bit strong and then you can click apply and now the stars were added back into our image. And in the history explorer, you can see stars removed, stars added. The next function is my pedestal remover. So this is really important for color images. Linear color images, when you first get them out of the, the master stack, ideally what you're gonna do is crop them to remove the stacking artifacts, then run this as like the number one thing to do after cropping the stacking artifacts. So I have here an image uh, from one of the viewers, one shot color camera. If you open the histogram, you're gonna see that the R, G, and B are just like all, all, all differently spaced. And you can see the minimums, right? The blue is almost three times the minimum of the red and their, their medians are shifted by, by about that much too. You can see that, you know, there, there's pedestals on each one offsetting them or an offset if you will. So what pedestal remover does, here we'll just open the histogram back up. I'm gonna click pedestal remover. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna do it on the current slot or all slots? So that way if you load in a bunch of one shot color images, you could just take care of them all at once. I'm just gonna click current slot, done. And now what it did is it set all the minimums to zero and, and, and that's all the that's all the more it did. It just removed that pedestal. So now things like background normalization, white balancing, heck, even even like cosmic clarity and stuff that has to do some normalization in the background. It 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 takes a bigger burden off them to do their jobs more properly if this pedestal is just gone. Right, it, it gives them a much better starting point and it gives you a much better starting point for stretching and, and things of that nature, not having your three channels all offset by, by different amounts. And uh, it's quick and easy. You just, when you load in your one shot color image, make sure the stacking artifacts are cropped out, click that button, it's good to go. All right, the next function is uh, remove green. 
This is uh, very, very similar to, you know, what you would call in Pixel Insight SCNR. It's this little green X button up here. Now, a lot of beginners um, like just trying to remove the green when they're doing palettes. That's really not what this button is for and really not what that function's for. That's This is really towards the end when you're trying to tweak some items that may still have a, a green look that you don't like into a more neutral red red blue palette when you first make your sho palette you're going to have a lot of green from hydrogen you're going to want to use color masks and stuff to manipulate those colors and not just hit it with scnr or with a remove green just something to think about but here's the button it's going to ask you how much you want to remove and I have my wizard nebula up here and you can see there's quite a bit of green tinging throughout this yellow so we'll, I'll just give it a full blast to, to show you the difference I'm going to click apply so now it's taking all those spots where the green pixel value is higher than the red and the blue and it goes to the average of the red and the blue value so it neutralizes those high green green value marks into the red blue color space so here's the after and the before i i, I wouldn't think most people use it at full blast but now, now you can see the difference the next item is this little water droplet with the with ph on it that's going to be for uh neutralizing the background so i've recently updated this as well uh you can draw a box where you think the background is or you could also click find background. Now this will be running the same algorithm that I have in PixInsight, where it's going to chop up your image in a bunch of tiles, measure the statistics in the different tiles, choose the two best ones, and then in each of those place it, well, place 200 sample points in each of those tiles. Let them follow gradient descent downhill. It's gonna find the best couple dimmest spots draw some squares around that 50 by 50 pixel squares and then like jiggle those squares around until it really finally settles down into the into the true background so i'm just going to click find background now you may have a hard time seeing it on youtube so i'll, I'll zoom in so here's the square it found for the background and now you could just click apply neutralization so the, the the change was subtle here the, the background was already pretty neutral but here's the before histogram and the after see how it lined up that that whole area the next function is white balance so within white balance i think most people they've been calling this color calibration or photometric color calibration um, this is not spectrophotometric color calibration or SPCC. Uh, that's a whole different discussion that, that we could have at some other time. But um, it is a stellar based white balancing. So you can click white balance. And when it loads up, it'll give you the, the white balance types. There's star based, which we're on, a manual or an auto. So the star based one will detect the stars. If you get an error saying it didn't find any stars, be sure to slide the slider to more sensitive. If it takes it a long time and you have like 12,000 stars, you may want to go to less sensitive. Uh, there's the auto stretch for the display. And currently it says it detected uh, 3,085 stars. The manual mode is if you just want to manually set the RGB gains. And then the auto mode is just going to take the global color balance and white balance it. Very similar to like, like what GIMP or Affinity would do. But let's go back to our stellar based white balancing and click apply. All right, now I did the stellar based white balancing and it also will pull up a graph of all the star colors and how it changed it from uh, one to the other. So in my case, the, the star colors were already pretty darn good, so really didn't have to do a whole lot of changing. Realistically, your stars should be from the blue to the oranges, right? That, this, this line throughout here. Uh, no stars are green or magenta in color. 
So before I, I, I did have quite quite a bit of um, some green stars, although this image wasn't wasn't bad at all. So you could see how the stellar fits changed during the stellar base white balancing. Here's a really good example I was able to I was able to find pull up. Uh, so this was a viewer's image on the Orion with their one shot color. And these were the stellar colors before and after. You see they were just all all sorts of over there in the, in the whole green regime and now it's uh the bulk of them are along the the blue to yellow line here which is which is where they need to be living and then after you do stellar based white balancing now you can now you can go ahead and do a linked stretch and now the colors are correct all right we'll cover the the next four functions here pretty quickly they're pretty straightforward uh the l with the arrow out is to extract the luminance you can uh, select the, stot, the slot to store your luminance image. And all it does is extract the luminance. And then we can go ahead and, and look at the luminance. So here's the luminance of that image. A lot of people like to extract the luminance, maybe do some additional sharpening and denoising, really pushing the luminance, and then merging that back in with your image. So then the L with the arrow towards it is to merge the luminance back in. So you can um, tell which slot the luminance is in, which slot your RGB image is in, and then just click OK. And then you're gonna see it says luminance recombined, and, and here's our image. All right, the next two have to deal with RGB spaces, just like the luminance. So the RGB circles with the arrows out is your RGB extraction. It's going to extract the RGB channels and put them in the next available slots. And then it also pulls up the previews for you immediately after as well so we got here's blue red and green in case you need to do different manipulations with those and then again here's the them and their slots for r g and b and then to recombine them it's just the dots without those out, out arrows you can load individual rgb files or use existing slots and i'm just going to bring them from slot r g and b and then these are the buttons if you wanted to actually load separate images. And uh, I'm on, I'm currently on the active slot five and I'm just gonna click combine. And there we are. Now our RGB combined image was on that blank active slot I was on. And now we have our combined RGB image. So that way you can manipulate those separate RGB channels um, if you need to, or if you have a mono in, or if you have a mono camera, right, you need to do channel combination for your RGB channels to, to combine them. So that's uh, both RGB extraction and RGB combination. The next part I'm gonna get into like blemish blaster, HDR, wavelet scales, uh, contrast limited adaptive, histogram equalization, morphological operations, and more. Please comment, like, and subscribe.